ice problem. Probably ban it every single game. Or pick it if you can. <laughs> yeah, if you guys missed the European LCS, uh, Ryze was a pretty much first pick worthy top laner in most cases and seemed to be very strong. I actually looked and uh, Flares has not played it on his main account if this is going to be first pick worthy. Um, I haven't seen Quas play much of it either, so that is a question for me in terms of uh, well, what is prioritized. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've been playing it in scrims because quite honestly, so. you don't even need that many games on him. He's not a very complicated champion. Once you get down your initial opening combo, then you pretty much just keep spamming any ability that comes up and you're good to go and chase them. Don't forget to get some some moves in there. You right have to get click moved forward and pretend in. you're playing Sona. Got it. All right, we're good to go here. Uh, LeBlanc, Sledge, well, Honey, and Alistair all banned away. First pick, Gragas, though. Gonna continue the trend of 100% and Rise is left open. All right, so strong jungler, all around jungler. Gives nothing away here for enemy. Uh, very, very versatile first pick. Being on blue side, they don't want to give away any of their solo lane matchups quite yet. Although they are guaranteed to get counterpicked in one of them. Absolutely. Now, it is worth pointing out this is the first game of three uh, where Irelia was not banned against enemy esports. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hecarim now gone away from him. The Rumble is him that Quas is happy to play. Those are the two champions Flares has played so far. So we might see that champion come out. Yep. Um, however, all the Team Liquid things they really care about, Phoenix is Cassiopeia, Phoenix is maybe Azir as well, those are right open. Yeah, definitely a lot left on the board. Uh, as far as jungle as well, even though they uh, enemy esports banned one jungle champion and first picked one, there's plenty for Iwadame to go to. He's been a big fan of Rek'Sai, big fan of Nunu as well, so he's completely fine. And there's the rise though, they were talking about. And uh, I don't know, I really thought it was going to get banned almost every single game. Let's see what enemy have because all the teams are very well aware of the state of Rise right now. So if you let it get through, you have something to counter it. And that is, you know, hard CC, silences, you know, maybe we saw Cho'Gath a little bit. Uh, he still does have a weakness to that Aurelia that you talked about. She can close on him early. You can, he's still squishy early. It's yep. just that basically if you want a TLDR of why Rise is so strong right now, his level 16 power was moved up to level six. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> he just on got a perma roots. On here. both his passive and his ultimate, uh, pretty much the value of those from level 16 was moved all the way up to level 6. So he gets really qu strong a lot quicker, uh, and he could pull off those machine gun moves a lot earlier. Aurelia, though, if, especially if she does yep. get some early uh, jungle support, you gap close on him, he's still squishy early. And Greg is one of those best early game junglers with some hard crowd control to really make sure that maybe Quas has a hard time. I do want to actually preface that there's a chance we see Rise mid just because we haven't seen it yet. Uh, you know, Ryze used to be occasionally mid laner or top laner. Phoenix still has not true. picked his champion for sure. Very true. So this is what could almost be a blind pick Aurelia. If you're going to, you know, pull out all the lane swap, and we've seen Aurelia mid. That's true. As well. So that could easily just match the lane swap. Oh, unfortunately, If though, Baker did it, I can do it. That's true. We saw Nuke Duck do it and nearly win with that as well. So a lot of fun things available now in League of Legends. You could pull, a, I believe it's a two-sin and play a support Aurelia. So three lanes for Aurelia <laughs> in this year in Fresh Play. All right, all right. That one, though. <laughs> I mean, one of the most varied champions in League of Legends right now in competitive. Either way, enemy esports do have to pick their mid laner as well as their AD carry. They know they're facing up against Kalista Thresh. Team Luka got a lot of champions they really want. And it's mid. There is here for Inox. No right. Kog'Ma, but how about the attack damage version? So that's definitely going to be the top lane Aurelia then. Uh, Varus in the top lane would be a very, Pretty very weird. scary, scary situation for him. Team Liquid, I already like what they've set up here with the two very, very strong threats. Uh, so you, enemy won't be able to just focus one. We'll have to see how the poke does work, though. I like, you know, Varus with Gragas uh, as well as Corky. This is a very early spiking poke squad mm -hmm. uh, because Varus, he spikes so much earlier than Kogma because it's a basic ability he relies on for his poke. You don't have to wait till level 16 to get that huge spike. Yeah. At level 9, he's got his maxed out arrow, and you're just trying to pile on items after that point. Exactly. It's just a matter of getting your Brutalizer, Last Whisper, Man of Muna in there, and sometimes that just comes in a bit faster than level 11 Kogma. Team Liquid make their last choice. Looks like the hover is on Azir after all. So just a very sort of normal team comp for Team Liquid. Big team fighting mid laner. Piglet gets to be on a playmaker. Expansion gets to make plays as well. And Quas set up to carry. Any one of these guys could take over the game for Team Liquid. 
Definitely. And we, that's that's been sort of a story for them. When one of the lanes, either, you know, bottom or mid, starts lacking in one of the games, somebody picks up the mantle. You know, week one, it was Quas and I will dominate, comboing for a huge carry for Team Liquid. We'll see what they do this time around, because Rek'Sai has got his choice of lanes to go to. Her choice of lanes. It's true. You know, we talk about early early game pressure junglers. Gragas and Rek'Sai right. here, two of the best. Yep. So it's all going to be about the early jungle pathing. And who could get their carry ahead? I would just bet, I would definitely place my bets on the Rise Aurelia matchup just because that is the most volatile matchup on the map. Absolutely agree. It's even a long lane, so you can run people down if they get even farther ahead. Looks like the crowd's getting ready for the game. We're getting ready as well. We get to see just how fearful these champions really are. The first time we get to see Rise here in North America, the first time Flare has been allowed to play Aurelia. And a whole bunch of fun things coming out here. So, what are you thinking? This game is going to be a whole bunch of fun. I'm taking it. Oh, yes. I don't know. I'm just like I'm just like amped up. I don't get to cast <laughs> the first game tell. of the day very much, so I'm just like more energetic than normal. Either way, guys, the teams are heading <laughs> onto the rift. Head over to Twitter. Let us know who you think is going to win. Twa tweet hashtag enemy <laughs> win <laughs> or hashtag TL win do at level esports. Speaking is hard. Freaks all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at you like a spider I monkey. I drank soda in like three weeks, actually. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm proud yeah, of you. Thanks. Here we go, guys. Game one, day one. Week two. Let me drink some Red Bull. Get on your level, Freak. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can get on my level. That's how it works. All right, let's see. Yeah, so... Uh, if you're also, if you have more questions about Rise, the Mana Crystal start is definitely a thing of the past. Scales has plenty of AP scaling on him now. Ooh. Oh, Inox winning the trade against Phoenix early on. No joke. Flask eaten. <laughs> Setting the tone right off the bat. All right. So yeah, this is another look for Inox. Yes, he did. He was a very early adopter of the AP Kogma mid. So they've definitely been a fan of mid poke style champions for a while. I haven't seen him play Varus. Oh, yeah. But they're off to that. Was it 10 gold? Up yep. Trinket Ward? 10 yeah. gold for Trashy. That's going to mean very little in the long run. But it feels great. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious, actually, since they all rushed out and only got defensive wards up. No deep wards to see lane swaps here. So I'm curious if we, e we will even see the matchup between Ryze and Aurelia. Because right now, uh, special up on the top side. So it looks like they will opt for a lane swap and try and get Rise to level, the level 6 as quickly as possible. Uh, just because, well, yes, you still have your passive you can rely on pre-level 6 to pull off you know, the semi-automatic machine gun style uh, of Rise. Once you get your level 6, that move speed boost to chase people down ensures that uh, they cannot run away from you once you pop your passive. Well, as you talk about Rise leveling up, he has started the Wolf Camp himself. He ranked E at level one for the area of effect clear. So Klaus gonna do some of that. Inox, meanwhile, trading with Phoenix. These guys already battling back and forth. And skirting around the range of the Sand Soldiers here for Inox. Yeah, Rise, you pretty much always start E. It's so strong early in lane. Some people even put um, three points into E, or two or three points just for laning phase. Um, and then transition over to W, but a lot of people also just maxing W straight up for the permanent incarceration once you get level six. All right, well, right now, enemy esports gonna go ahead and jungle the right hand side of the map. We just a little while ago saw a special look for the blue buff on the left side. That didn't happen though. Quas puts a defensive ward, teleports to his lane. Mm -hmm. He's gonna start leeching experience. <laughs> And, as my voice clears, enemy esports will get two buffs, as will I will dominate in the near future. Yeah, let's see if they decide to go for the risky dive here. Because even if you have a ward, uh, enemy can still shove in and try and cut you off. Kragas could try and uh, cut off the exit route for Quas. And Aurelia heading bottom. They have four people bottom side. If you mess this up, though, and you yeah. give a kill to Rise early on, it's going to be really rough. They're going to try and take advantage of uh, his low base stats, though. Ward over the wall by Running Flair. for the hills. Gets spotted, and Quas going to hide very far back. Trick it over the wall, will not spot anything. 
that ward certainly does. He's all aware of this. Yeah, he's just waiting for reinforcements. By the time, you know, Dominate gets here, uh, they'll actually be well equipped to take the... Oh, a little bit too early. Gonna take the fight before the rest of the team shows up. Flash, Body Slam comes in with a knockout Power Dominate hit. with some turret shots as well. A trashy goes down. First Blood comes in, Quas battling Otter. A nice hook from the backside. Body drop with Ignite on Quas won't get the kill. Otter the second drop as well, and Dominant to run away. Two kills, maybe make that three as Flares tries to die with the turret, gets <laughs> imprisoned up. 3-0 Team Liquid. All right. So we said if this goes poorly, if yeah. you execute this poorly, then you're going to have a really rough game. You don't take that chance. Quas even gave them a warning shot. All right, Phoenix is going to be uh, next in the line for the train, able to get out with the dash. But man, Quas even gave him a warning shot, firing off the E to let him know, I have a ward here. I've seen you for the last 15 seconds. We probably have a plan for yeah. dealing with this dive, and enemies still go for it. Trash is going to lose his Raptor buff. Special's going to zone him off his own ward. Can he? Oh, can he yeah. Special Hold on. No, yeah, you're right. Buff. Special does have Flash, but a whole lot of damage coming through. He's trying to get away. Flash is the wall. Yeah, he's fine. All right. Special uh, not backing down from a fight over a ward. They're very important to support players. Flash reward, I guess. That's worth it. <laughs> I feel like it's not. Uh, just because they gained so much early game, it's not going to be too big of a deal. He did use up three people's time. We'll see if he ends up paying for that. Yeah, see, not only... All right, well, you pretty much know the story here. Basically, the biggest mistake is Trashy flashing into turret range. One turret shot, two turret shots. Dominate jumps on the opportunity, by the way. Three so shots. Good job, yeah, three shots. Dominate jumps on the opportunity, so good job by him reacting to the... Bit of a misplay there, but man, the cleanup is brutal. Cross also just sort of baiting in here, chugging his potion, and he has a shield. Uh, Flares, I guess he did not have E up for that all in, but definitely the move of a desperate man there. All right, well, a great lead for Team Liquid. You know, it's, uh, I think he'll live, maybe. Special said that uh, they were worried about the early game maybe a little bit, but that they expect to beat enemy esports. Well, with an early game like this, Team Liquid has to feel very confident they're going to take this game home. Definitely. They have so much scaling. <laughs> Rise, yeah. Azir, Kalista all look pretty good for them. We'll see how they do the mid game, though. Uh, definitely need to transition this early lead into some extra ward coverage so that Dominate. Oh, here comes Dominate. Speaking of the. Rek'Sai herself. Oh, almost in range of the Rune Prison. Flares turns around, gets hit up. One more spell. Oh, won't quite die, but Flares <laughs> won't quite die. Uh, passive not quite charged there for Quas. You can check, um, by the way, uh, how close he is to popping his passive. Those The new icons around him, around his feet. You can see once he gets up to number four, his next spell will trigger it. That's also why uh, you see like Hoonian guys um, earlier in the EU LCS, just throwing out random cues every once in a while mm -hmm. to keep up their stacks. Also of note, uh, Quas has not gone towards tier just yet. Typically yeah. the rises I see uh, Rush tier, the goddess, get a stacking early on, but he's looking at like parts of Catalyst first. True. Guess he uh, was aware that enemy are not afraid to go for early dives, wants a little bit extra maximum health so that he can survive any shenanigans. I still think that he will, you know, turn that into attack, Catalyst, go Rod, go Tear. Mm. But you're right, we'll be delayed a bit. Let's see, as we go ourselves. <laughs> That's true. Those are a lot of really good champions. Oh, dumbfounded. First pick is definitely strong, but you're right. Right now, the uh, dual lane of Team Liquid, despite being slightly down in items, his Piglet hasn't backed. Doing a pretty good job of uh, winning the two-on-two two here. Yeah, and this lane, Thresh, Callista, it's it's so hard to punish this lane. Even if you wanted to try and focus Piglet in this game, bringing jungle pressure just seems so futile. As a jungler trying to gank a Thresh, Callista lane. All right, well, here goes the double hookins. A lot of damage dealt back, but it looks like Otter wanted to get away off the back, so body drop nearly living up to his name. 
low on health here. Dominic coming back with Quas. The movement speed looking for flares. They're going to probably land the passive. root into the knockout. The passive is on a whole ton of damage, and the tenacity that Aurelia gets not going to be enough. Fourth kill for it. Team Liquid. So, about that Rise Aurelia matchup, yes, that's going to attract a lot of jungler attention. Uh, yep. Finally does pay off here. Dominate sticking to the game plan, returning to bottom lane, as it were. One versus one, and they're able to take down flares again. What a start for Team Liquid. The only thing um, that they might be a little bit sad about is that Quas didn't get the last hits for any of these kills. It's true. So, he will be a little bit delayed but very, very happy with the, the way the early game is going. Yeah. Even with mostly assists, he's still sitting on more gold than Phoenix and practically as much as Piglet here, so you can't be too bad or too sad if you're cross right now. Even individually, he's up like 1,000 gold over flares, so this matchup definitely feeling well, good for Team Liquid. You know, as they say, things could always be worse. Things could always be better as well. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> You look, it could be 18 and 0 right now. <laughs> now wouldn't that be great? There you go. All right, but honestly, this is going to be a arduous path uh, back to even a, an even game for enemy. It's going to be oh, very gosh. difficult for them to work their way back in this one. All right, let's see how they do it. The game certainly isn't over. It's just one with an advantage right now. Trashy looking for a lane gank has snuck through the brushes. But as soon as the wave pushes out, Quas just recalls back. He's yeah. very cautious about this. He's one of the top laners that has very good sense around when he might get ganked. Yeah, you can also tell, you know, how strained enemy feel right now. Trashy going for that uh, lane gank onto a lane that rises double the CS of Aurelia. Uh, he's going back to purchase right now, so he's going to have a huge, huge advantage in that lane if for any reason I will dominate Z is on the bottom side of the map or even has a tunnel there to teleport to. That gank gets turned around on you. You get destroyed in the two versus two. But he's got patience. He knows that they have to make this work or else Ryze is going to get out of control. So go all in for it. Stays the entire time. Still has flash. Gets knocked back into the team. There's the two on one. Quas gets the shield. He flashes backwards. And Flare starts oh running my. away. He turns on a trashy instead. Uh. So imagine if that was two on two, Freak. <laughs> oh yeah, they'd be dead, like last time. This is Rise in the current state of the game. Pop his ultimate, gets the AOE off. Flares trying oh! to the time. He's two hits away from getting the kill. The body slam lands. There's the kill picked up and honors join to the fight. Summon heal used to keep Trashy alive. The lantern pulls out. I will dominate. Yeah, maybe that was a bit of hubris from Quas. Uh, you, he started up the re-engage or the bait before Dominate actually closed the distance. So. That's a huge win for enemy. When we talk about the steps that they're going to need to take to get back in this game, that was definitely a welcome kill down bottom. We'll see how many more steps it's going to take for enemy esports right now. They sit down about 4,000 gold in this one. No global objectives gained. That's just farm and kills. In fact, every single lane winning in farm right now. Making sure the team liquid really are feeling great early on. Flares will lane swap to the top side to face Piglet. But that's nearly Bloodthirster versus just components with 400 gold here. Flares can't feel good about this matchup. And you're seeing the kind of damage he's taking. Great hook by X Special. This could be a kill on a body drop. Top lane turret dies to Piglet in the meantime, but nothing picked up on that bot side. Body drop can feel safe. Hmm, let's see how they swap this back, because uh, if they actually leave the lane pushing... Oh, good. They've got it pushing towards Quas, so he can feel fairly safe on the rise. You really have to protect him now. You know, he had, does not have flash. And enemy have decided to start start focusing him. Still sitting on mostly mana items, mm -hmm. so there is a possibility of you know chain stunning him, 100% to zeroing him. But you know anytime the counterplay to a champion in the game is just stun lock them from 100% to zero. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a, good luck with that one. That's a strong champion. All right, body drop, and special trading blows. Play box, a lot of auto attacks. Body drop forced to flash out the box, but here comes Dominate, flash knockups too. Body drop puts the ult down to only stun up, really one. Still drops down one for zero again. Team Liquid farther ahead. All right, Dominate again. Another move down bottom. Still the ward coverage here. Oh! Yeah. What was that? We need to replay the health. Eight health? Like, <laughs> all right. That's my guess. You sounded so confident. I thought you saw it. Uh, single I saw, I saw regen to 11. So definitely single guess. Yeah. 
But uh, the ward coverage here for enemy is obviously going to be uh, lacking because they have zero map control, but they need to try and get some defensive ones up at least. Right now, they're just taking gambles of, you know, the move, going for risky moves in places they just hope that Dominate is not on the map. That's really, really hard against Rek'Sai because she, you know, has the global can jump across to where she pleases. Dragon number one does go down. Crash is at four health, by the way. I got that one wrong. Thank you very much, guys in the back, for telling me the number. But yeah, so first Dragon comes through to Team Liquid. A lot of leads everywhere on the map. We don't watch the mid lane much, but Phoenix has been getting very far ahead of Inox. This Varus so far not doing a whole lot in the matchup. Just trying to farm what he can from range. And if, you know, if we are talking about Vision there, we can critique Team Liquid a little bit. They have such a substantial lead right now. They could very well... Uh, you know, shore up their vision very easily, especially around that mid lane you just talked about. You know, make sure that enemy don't have any windows back into the game. They're being, they're leaving it a little bit askew. And yeah, we'll see. Maybe Team Liquid will make him install Mac OS instead. Get rid of the windows here. Here comes the engaging special, looking for body drop. Oh, does not quite stop the anchor toss, but Fate's call might help. Body drop knocked up. Gonna get locked down. Piglet to get the rend kill. There we go. 6-1 Team Liquid just everywhere on the map. Yeah. I will dominate is there, killing someone of enemy esports. And now Inox looks for the play. Whoa. Can't the engage. There comes the flash knockback and rises here. The first kill that Dominate <laughs> misses. Great play by Phoenix and Quas. Surprise. Quas is in town. Shoved up the top lane there. Moved down mid. Take down the turret. All right. Time for Team Liquid to close the noose. Outer turrets first on the docket. That one's down quite low. This bottom one as well. Otto's got nowhere to run to. Bit of a fish out of water gets knocked down. Piglet takes him out. And that bottom outer turret sure to fall. Now Dominate finds Trashy. This man's also really in the wrong spot. Jumps over the wall. And he's going to stay alive. That was a stretch, Freak. Yeah. But Otter is... <laughs> Not very, fish out of, not very close to a fish. It's it's a mammal. Not very close at Much all. Much like Otter the player, also a mammal. There, all right, there's your connection. Great. <laughs> uh, but honestly, yeah, uh, there. even with Ward, there is nothing you could do against a Rek'Sai lantern gank over that wall. Uh, really, really, really tough situation for all the entire team. All right, so Phoenix, a little bit off on the drift there to the side, but it doesn't matter. He has all of his summoners available. Oh, oh wow. Tried to flash jump. away from boss, yeah. Can't even get over the uh, the wall there. Soldiers doubled up. Yeah, that was the first time we saw those mid laners fight, and it wasn't a fair one. Good job, Team Liquid, though. There's the fact that everyone on the map is running around so well and making great, making great calls. And again, they find Botted Up once more. TP comes in from Flares. The CC onto a special who can just get Fates called out. It's a bunch of wasted damage. Orbit Flares three. getting targeted. Might get picked up. Piglet gets one. Now the re-engage from Botted Up. Aquas has joined in the fray, and that's going to be more kills coming through. They do knock down Rek'Sai, but a second kill for Piglet. Make that a, another one for Quas. Special trying to get away from Trashy. <laughs> Does get the kill, so at least two picked up for enemy esports, but Piglet gets three, Quas gets one, even Phoenix right. grabs one cross for the cross map, map ace. ace. As predicted, this is going to be one of the strongest stops of North American LCS so far. Team Liquid, off of that early misdive from enemy, yeah, into probably the worst area on the mat for them. Really, really difficult for them to come back from this. Not to mention, you know, Team Liquid is such great. Ooh. Can he How does he follow it up, Freak? Dash, dash, he dash. Presses, he's on his keyboard. W E Q. He's just waiting for the cooldown for his sand soldier dash again. What's it called? Arise, shifting the sands, and then him. E is. I'm going to hover over it and figure it out. <laughs> You already said it, shifting sands. Oh, it is. Oh, the other one was conquering sands. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Emperor's divides the ultimate. All Didn't right. look that one up. I just knew it. <laughs> A for effort. It's like my job is to read off champion or something. Piglet currently 6-0, and zero, by the way. Yeah, he's doing great. 
sat line there. He wasn't after. even part of those first three. He was chilling, farming top lane monsters. Yeah, we were so focused on the bottom lane. Uh, Piglet oh. here. Let's see if we can pull off a one versus two. I Wait, like he it. walks into him. I like it. And they don't even fight back. Our oh, the odd job strafe. Jeez. Oh, gosh. Now Piglet on the chase. He did get the rend reset, by the way. So body drop. Take him on, Piglet. Keep going. All right. Wow, what a pansy. <laughs> I would have fought that. He's just waiting to even the odds here. Special's got his back. Time to two versus three. I guess like, even the odds is a cool term. Because they both refer to numbers. <laughs> that, one was, that one was at least better than the fish out of water referring to an otter, That's, which was ridiculous. It's an aquatic animal, at least. All right, turn go down is pretty yeah. quick. Summon a shoulder on top of it. Nice little chunk there. Blue buff on the Azir. Siege is easy. Skirmishing is easy. Pretty much everything is easy for Team Liquid at this point. And man, we talked about, you know, oh, last split, Team Liquid, they had a they had a 2-0 start. You know, mm -hmm. this time they again had a 2-0 start. But people are questioning the strength of schedule for them. This again, uh, enemy, yeah. one of the new teams that came into the league. However, this game has been, you know, they're most convincing by far. Definitely, the execution this game has been much better for Team Liquid. So, oh man! And speaking of execution, Binder Drop might get to walk about four paces before flashing the wall and still dying. Fifteen to three. Second dragon picked up. Three turrets as well. Very few things are going well for enemy esports this game. And practically everything well for Team Liquid. Yeah, Team Liquid uh, definitely feeling good about themselves so far this split. Piglet already up to the Bloodthirster plus Runats as well, so that's early. You can, you got, he can definitely go for uh, poor odds as far as taking, you know, pretty much any fight that enemy decides to throw at him. All righty, so. 11,000 gold lead at 20 minutes. One of the biggest disparities we have seen in the NALCS and in Competitive League of Legends as a whole. 20 minute Baron could be a thing. I mean, pretty much anything as you said, right? All the objectives are easy. All the skirmishes are easy. Mm -hmm. The question is, what does Team Liquid do with this kind of a lead? Exactly. Move up your vision, control neutral objectives very easily. I mean, they have the option of going for sieges with Phoenix, but... They don't even need to give that opportunity for enemy to get a miracle Gragas ultimate that you know might knock one person under their turret. As long as they just control the map. Okay, well they're gonna control it through bear and scuttle crab respawns. Ward gets put down. Specials in the brush though. Hooks oh. up Otter. Goodbye, AD carry flashes out. Does stay alive for now. Fates call. Maybe to re-engage. Baron's been picked up already, so the rest of this fight is with bonus attack damage and ability power. There goes the kill on the Nautilus. Knock up once again onto Otter. Special quite low, but wow, Inox gets the kill. I will dominate. A one for one so far. Flash engage. There's the dodge. Flares now getting locked up only on a Triforce and Boots one. More poke coming down. The team trying to disengage. Team Liquid only get one kill. Oh, take that back. Piglet is legendary. Nice kill for him. Maybe a turret too. All right, definitely a turret. Let's see if they decide to recall uh, because their waves are not pushed up very far. So just going to take the safe route here. Everybody got chunked fairly low after that. Yeah, not ideal giving up the kill on Rek'Sai, but got Baron, got two for one. Pretty much as expected there for Team Liquid. Now that they do have Baron buff, their uh, Siege, much easier to pull off. They could actually split very effectively as well, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, push several lanes at once with the Baron up minions, just because they are so strong. And with all the threat that Rek'Sai, Azir, Thresh can kind of project, even the Rise route, uh, the wave clear options get a little bit worse. Normally, Inox can charge a Q and knock down minions decently well, but yeah. with all the, the fall off damage of Piercing Arrow, he can't even kill the cast minions very easily. Let alone the fact that the melee minions just take 40, like, or sorry, like 80% reduced damage from champions. So, actually knocking the minions off the turrets is already a difficult effort for enemy esports. Yeah, it has to be a combined effort from Trashy and Otter as well, lending what they can to try and take out the minions. Looks like the focus will be bottom. 1-3-1 uh, initially from Team Liquid, but 
Everybody making their way down to knock out all the outer turrets first. Clean up all the global gold there for the squad. Yeah, finish the game out cleanly. Get more fantasy points. All right. If you're running Team Team Liquid, it'll be a lot of points for these guys. Just put the wards down. Make sure that Piglet's not getting flanked and the rest of the team joins when he does reach the turret. Now to the inhib turret, but you're seeing the risk aversion of TL. They don't get much damage on that structure just yet. Yeah. They're letting Quas push top him because he's uncontested here. Yeah, nobody can one versus one the rise at the moment. And even a two versus one is a fairly scary uh, situation. We saw it before. So. They didn't even win. All right, one more attempt now. And you can see, again, playing pretty safely until they see Aurelia join the top lane. All right, so all-in prospects from enemy. Trashy has to get an amazing Gragas ultimate to split the team and get alone time with one member of Team Liquid under the turret. Then maybe uh, they could pull off a kill and try to hold. Barring that, uh, Team Liquid pretty standard here trying to close the yeah. loop. Well, Baron Buff's timing out on this wave. This is the last chance they've got the buff, and actually it times out right now. Here comes Vidrop to the front line, hooked in. A lot of damage dealt. Expecial is low, but Fate's Call keeps him safe. Phoenix low. Ooh, low health on Phoenix and D, but they can't get the kill. Quas stuck in the top lane, pushing things down. And slowly but surely, the turrets are losing more and more health. Team Liquid aren't losing any kills, and they can recall, heal up, and take Dragon 3 in a minute. All right. Just going to back off. Got all the outer turrets that they were looking for. Increase the gold, the gold lead there for Team Liquid. And the standard execution. Now, looking forward for this team. They've definitely shown uh, that they can carry from all three lanes, especially by their champion picks this game. I mean, well, if you're going to get the option to pick up this strong of uh, yeah, sure. carry champions from all three lanes, of course they're going to take it. But uh, definitely showing that all three of these lanes want to be um, the carry for the team. And we'll see if later on in the season, if that does start to cause any problems, you know, if they have to, if there's a game where they have to actually fight over CS and they can't freely farm all three lanes and you get to that mid game where you only have a couple choices of, you know, one or two free lanes of farm, mm -hmm. do they decide, who do they decide to give it to? Uh, because Phoenix as well definitely wants to be a point man for this team. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's so funny seeing how little Phoenix has uh, done for team fights. He's been stuck in the mid lane, just pushing minions down. He's been part of two of the 17 kills. Just like everyone else is winning. It's like my favorite solo queue game. I'm just farming, and my team's winning in every single other lane. Show up for team fights. The dragon number three going to be easily picked up by I will dominate and Expecial as the rest of the team runs around the map. The red buff respawn. Maybe Piglet goes for that first. Seems like Teal happy to take their time, grab everything off the map. They've seen games be very hectic before, and there's no bonus points for winning fast. <laughs> and they've no. indeed cleared their entire jungle away before moving on the other side of the map. Yeah, in fact, there are bonus points for winning uh, by collecting everything on the map and winning slower, I guess. We're looking at fantasy. They're one of those completionists. Yeah. They gotta grab like all the gold school chulas. Conquer the world. Well, from enemies' perspective, though. They're probably still thinking about that uh, level two play, the very opening minutes of the game where um, they decided to go for the dive even after Team Liquid uh, basically alerted them mm -hmm. that they knew what was going on. Uh, We've seen that play, though, go well and badly. Sometimes they zone out the other three, and it looks so good. So you can chalk it up to just that mechanical error of Trashy getting, you know, flashing uh, body slamming just a little bit too close to the turret mm -hmm. and then dominate being there for the knockup to ensure he took three tower hits yeah. if they didn't take those three tower hits then yes it could be a completely different story it definitely wouldn't have been as bad uh, you know an all kill for them but uh probably gonna have to uh, revisit that one and you know shore up at least the clarity of shot calling for this team well, we've got another match tomorrow. We'll see if enemy can fix those mistakes. Right now, though, Team Liquid just kind of... This is basically what um, sort of 5 versus 0 League of Legends would look like if you were to play the game like sort of strategically and like cut off all the escapes. Enemy Esports not really contesting oh. anything because they can't. I'm thinking at this stage <laughs> of the true, game. true, true, true. Right, the last 15 minutes have been Team Liquid sort of 
like anyone aspiring to be a shot caller can go watch the VOD and like watch all the ward placement and be like, this is what a team should do if you never get opposed. All these wards, all these rotations, this is what Team Liquid will do without opposition. Just methodically cleaning the map of all resources. Yeah. I mean, there's like, what would be the in for enemy esports at this point? They can barely get farmed together. Both jungles being farmed by Team Liquid, all the neutral decks going to them. There's just no, there's no inroads. Yeah, pretty much. Hotshot's got the right idea. It does get a little bit hard to watch when you have that big of a lead. You feel bad for the what? For the underdog at that point. Man, Dom didn't even need Smite to last hit that Baron. Burrowed Q took it. Grats? He outlast hit Rise, <laughs> man. I'm just saying this is how good Dom's mechanics are. Uh, I'm just saying right. this point. Yeah. I'm making up fake storylines. I like it. You are digging deep. <laughs> Stretching. Isn't it cool how Phoenix picked an avian champion? <laughs> oh, let the crowd take that one. <laughs> you can, are you going to compliment him on his uh, arrow dodges now? He's dodged two in a row, freak. If you... That's all you need for a, a line. <laughs> I don't... Two points. Oh, all right. That all one. right. Let's, uh, let's continue on with the split push here. 4-1 here for Team Liquid. Ooh, dominate a bit close to the enemy champions, but... He's so tanky, he barely even cares. Doesn't even register the damage. At what point do you decide to go for a tower dive here? Because uh, well, Dominate's getting pretty tanky. He's got the full tank rex side going. Yeah, I just feel like there's actually so much crowd control, like their assault, Greg assault. You can totally screw that up. Like, no matter who's the one who gets isolated, you can knock Azir and Callista back, and then Rek'Sai is alone. Like, she is going to die in Rid and Hib turret. Now, I do think there's room for a bit more like, Azir presses W once in a while to knock the turret down. I think these turrets could definitely die fast. Uh, hello, hard. Freak. You could buy an Ohm Wrecker. Oh, uh, you could buy an Ohm Wrecker. Oh, man. It's true. Gives cool. health and armor. And if you are man. this far ahead in gold, buy an Ohm Wrecker. Oh, oh, Phoenix! You can do that. <laughs> That's like a Messiah status play. He burned, like, three ults on himself. Uh, uh. I mean, <laughs> he didn't use Flash, and now Varus ulti's down, so what are those good... Like they sh they show down. just how strong their team comp is right now. You can make a mistake like that mm. and just, you know, Zone doesn't wait for a Lantern to get out perfectly wow. without having to blow summoners. Dom um, almost got knocked into the turret. The explosive cast was used, but he stays alive. But you're seeing the defensive power of enemy esports. The fact that they're just playing slow and methodically and waiting for Teal to go into them. You're seeing Liquid actually have to respect that. But Dom recalls, ults back into the fight, and it's like nothing ever happened. All right. This might be the wave. Four hits on that turret, let's say. If his is there. Well, that wave had zero, and Phoenix is still running around the map. Various sides find some damage in a flares, but gets poked back out by Inox. Yeah, honestly, the enemy squad, you know, we they talked about their mid-game poke from these guys. The Corky Varus plus Gragas is strong at defense here, and since they were so far behind, their mid-game basically is now. Yeah, <laughs> all the power spikes have come in for enemy esports, guys. they're so behind on gold. They're down 19,000 gold. All right, here there comes it is. the engage. Couple of hits onto the turret. That will be it being picked up. 5v4 inside the base. Body drop gonna get locked up there. A stun on a piglet, but is there enough damage? The AOE root from Varus not doing enough to keep the team alive. In hip will get killed. Some poke from enemy esports might not do nearly enough here. Flash in from Quas finds Inox, takes him down onto Otter. That's the third kill of the fight. In they go to the base. I will dominate Crest 10 assists. Leave 10 it at 420. For Piglet. Ah, don't kill anybody. Oh my gosh. Well, we'll see what the rest of enemy esports does in this one. Trash, he's up at the front. There's the flare. There's a whole uh, bunch of damage. 421. Phoenix will get his first death of the game. Flares gets on the scoreboard of the second kill. Dominate. <laughs> That's going to be GG, though. 5 to 21, 5 to 22. Team Liquid, in a dominating fashion, take down enemy esports. What is this? Everyone with shoes. Yeah, what? Should I just, like, take mine off right now? Will that make me cool? I'm down. All right, here we go. I'm going to unlace. I don't like wearing shoes. Anymore. All right, I got boots on. Do you have like sneakers? Oh, you got boots too. Okay, good to know. Either way, though, enemy esports putting up a valiant effort, but Team Liquid three and zero oh to start the split out. Certainly, the kind of start you would want for your team. Not losing, who would have thought?
All smiles there from Peter as well. And you have to say, Peter, <laughs> good job in Champion Select. Yeah. Uh, being able to come away with that squad. Yeah, it was strange seeing some of the picks come through. I mean, the rush pick on Gragas with Rek'Sai still up. That always raises a couple of eyebrows. Yeah. Uh, they didn't try to ban out Phoenix. I think there are already a lot of good teamfight mid laners. The top four seem to be Azir, Cassio, Victor, uh, Vladimir. It seemed like the general top tier of like teamfight damage mids. So, so, well, just pick one of the four. We can't get rid of all of them. But I mean, Piglet allowed to hard carry and Clist if he wanted to. The rise came through again. We thought that was going to be a big deal. Ended up being a big deal. He, he crushed everybody. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that early uh, dive, if they had you know, performed it the same way, it would have turned out the same way on a different champion if Raz was not in the game. That's true. You're absolutely right about that. He managed to scale pretty well, but yeah, when you flood the dive, you take three turret shots on a level three jungler. You tend to give up double buffs, and the game goes badly from there. So enemy esports certainly have one big thing they can look at to shore up execution-wise. Um, they, I think, played fairly smart in terms of rotation play. Once they were that far behind, they defended around turrets, didn't give up too many free kills around the map, but uh, I do really like Team Liquid's Killer Instinct. They had forced so many ganks by lanterning Rek'Sai over the wall, tunneling in, knocking up Bided Up, killing him for like the seventh time in the game. Yep. That was good stuff by Team Liquid. Yeah, Dominate had some very impressive ganks to snowball this game. Yeah. Uh, and keep, like you said, it was it was until you know like 20 minutes in until someone got a kill without Dominate being there. Yeah, it was like the seventh or eighth kill where Quas and um, Phoenix just like two on one uh, in Ox in the mid lane. Otherwise, Dominate's final score line 15 of the 22 kills. That's pretty impressive, highest on his team. Like overall, like just a, a solid game from Team Liquid. You got to see them play unfortunate for enemy, largely unopposed. Yeah. They forced a lot of ganks. They all worked. They rotated well. They waited for two Barons to win the game, which you can't really complain about. Piglet, the only man on his team to go deathless. Good for Piglet. And he even tried to save a special try with the ulti. <laughs> what a tryhard. Either way, for more on Team Liquid's third.